Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Senior Airman Carlson, your narrator for today's ceremony. On behalf of Colonel Michael Grogan, Commander 455th Expeditionary Mission Support Group, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, and Presiding Officer for today's ceremony, I would like to welcome you to today's event in which you will witness the inactivation of the 455th Expeditionary Aerial Port Squadron, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Carmichael. At this time, we'd like to recognize our distinguished guests. We are honored to have with us today the Commander, 455th Air Expeditionary Wing, Brigadier General Mark Kelly. <laughs> Vice Commander, 455th Air Expeditionary Wing, Colonel Nathan Allerheiligan. <laughs> Command Chief, 455th Air Expeditionary Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Jeffrey Brown. Commander 455th Air Expeditionary Maintenance Group, Colonel Mike Merritt. <laughs> Commander 455th Air Expeditionary Medical Group, Colonel Gary Walker. <laughs> Representing the Commander, 455th Expeditionary Operations Group, Lieutenant Colonel Clint Wilson. In addition, we extend a warm welcome to all commanders, chiefs, and special guests that have joined us to witness this time-honored tradition. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem and invocation. Water and pull! Sir, I present the command. Chaplain Braswell will now deliver the invocation. If you will, please pray with me. Almighty God, we come before you with a true sense of pride, gratitude, and humility. We thank you for your care and protection of the personnel assigned to the 455th Expeditionary Aerial Port Squadron. For missions accomplished, 
for heroism displayed and devotion to duty, each member of the squadron has brought great credit upon himself or herself, this unit, and the United States Air Force. As the guide on his case, we pause to give thanks for Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Carmichael and the many commanders who went before him. As people of principle and leadership, they have demonstrated through their dedicated efforts the ideals which have helped mold and make our country great. We ask that you would bless Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Pate with wisdom and understanding as he undertakes an expanded mission. Defend us day by day with your grace. Strengthen us in our trials and temptations. Give us courage to face the perils that may beset us. And finally, bring us safely to our journey's end. We ask this in the name that is above every other name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Braswell. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the presiding officer for today's ceremony, Colonel Michael A. Grogan. Ah. Well, Happy New Year to everybody. What a great day to be an American Airman here at Bagram. Uh, first things first, uh, General Kelly, Colonel Zella Halligan, and uh, Gaelic fellow commanders, squadron commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, and most importantly, the men and women of the 455th Expeditionary Airport Squadron, thank you very much for joining us here today. Up front, a special thank you to the chaplain for his kind words. Uh, honor guard for always looking sharp and representing our nation's colors proudly. To Airman Carlson for doing just a great job narrating. And Mass Sergeant Nordson uh, for just doing a great job organizing and herding all the cats for, for this today. Um, much like many of you, I've had a couple, uh, well, many times over my career where I've, I've paused and have had just uh, on a reflection and thinking, being very proud to be an American Airman. And being part of this wing here at Bagram, I've had many more opportunities to pause and reflect uh, just about, of just being proud to be an American Airman. And one of those moments came recently where Chief Bankson and I had an opportunity to go assist, help loading a, a C-17. And I gotta tell you, being out there, chaining down vehicle after vehicle, Humvees, dump, dump trucks, trailers, etc., uh, on one aircraft, mind you, uh, I was impressed, not with just how much you can fit on just one aircraft, uh, but more so by the professional ballet, if you will, between the porters and the air crew. Again, all just the sheer volume aside of what goes on that aircraft, I, what was impressive to me was how safely, securely, and efficiently it was done. And that was on one aircraft, just one. Think about doing that 60 to 70 times a day, every single day. That's what these porters did just a couple months ago when we were at the peak of OEF retrograde. Reflecting on that experience, I gotta tell you, it just made me proud to be an airman uh, here at Bagram serving. So today we're here to formally recognize the official deactivation of the aerial port squadron and essentially say goodbye to the airmen uh, and their leader. Uh, likewise, we also welcome uh, our contract team because even though the squadron is standing down, the port mission will continue. So first, to the men and women of the Aeroport Squadron, or affectionately known as our port dogs. Your squadron's been around for a little over six years. And when it was activated, it was activated at a time where our nation needed that level of capability, that level of focus, so you need to stand up a squadron that would focus primarily on that mission set. Uh, one of our joint pubs, not to put you asleep, but one of our joint pubs actually says, logistics sets the campaign's operational limits. Said another way, the pace of the fight depends on the pace of logistics, period. And our port dogs and your predecessors that have been here over these last six years have set an amazing pace. Just a couple quick facts of over your six year history of some amazing days that your squadrons had. Um, for example, uh, back in April 2010, just on one day alone, they moved 1,590 short tons of cargo. Now. If you're not a porter or a logistician like me, you look at that number and you're like, okay, so what? That's about 106 C C-130 equivalents of stuff moved from this port in one day. Just an amazing fact. Highest passenger count, 
3024. Uh, most aircraft touched in one day of a specific type, 86 C-130s. That's in a 24-hour period. If you look at all aircraft types in one 24-hour period, 196. That's in one day. It's an amazing feat. Just a couple of months ago, and I guess today I can say last year, in October, uh, this team touched 1,000, just under 1,500 aircraft in a month alone of October. Just an amazing feat. For the 455th Airport Squadron, your history is rich. Your contributions are enormous. You can be very proud. You are part of the last airmen to serve under Operation Enduring Freedom. That's something to be very, very proud of. You're also part of the first airmen to serve under Resolute Support in Operation Freedom Sentinel. You served during the absolute peak of OEF retrograde. To steal the boss's words, it's basically 13 years of stuff in this nation, leaving in about 13 months. Just an amazing feat. You outsourced a squadron while doing that, and you ran the busiest port in DOD with unwavering commitment. For all that, humbly, all I can really offer you is a, is a simple thank you. Thank you for your service and your sacrifice in delivering that. Adding to today's uniqueness on, the occasion, on this occasion is the fact that the port is being converted from an organization that was fueled by airmen to an organization that's going to be fueled by other great Americans, our contract partners. And so with that today, to our contract brothers and sisters that are joining the team, I just, on behalf of Chief Bankson and myself, we look forward to working with you and welcoming to our team. Having said all that, we also have to say goodbye to the commander that led this port without fail for almost eight months. As I've mentioned, Chris has commanded the busiest aerial port in all of DOD. And just like every challenge the Air Force has ever handed to them, he's done an outstanding job. He's done an outstanding job here sustaining airmen, sailors, soldiers, Marines, our coalition partners all over Afghanistan. While at the same time, again, doing all that, managing the peak of OEF retrograde, and outsourcing the squadron. That is not a trivial list of accomplishments, Chris. It's quite amazing, actually. Chris, your wit and your can-do attitude inspires confidence in those you lead and those you follow. I've watched you interact with your airmen at all levels. Your airmen were lucky to have you, and I thank you for your leadership. From what I've, from what I've personally witnessed over the last five months, the CENTCOM J4 staff is going to benefit tremendously from your presence. As you depart for McDill to the beaches down there, uh, I just want to wish you and your family just a very safe and joyous re reunion. Um, for Maeve, Addison, and Reigns, please thank them for their sacrifice and their support for you over this time. A job well done. Congratulations on being the last airport commander in this country. Finally, Although we're closing a significant chapter by standing down the squadron, the mission of the port, as I've mentioned, continues. Uh, it's simply being reorganized into a flight, and to that end, I can think of no more capable officer or squadron commander to take on this challenge, Lieutenant Colonel Drew Pate. They say amateurs talk tactics, professionals talk logistics. As General Kelly and I both know, Drew is no amateur. Drew is a seasoned logistician, and quite frankly, he's a class act. Drew already has arguably the largest, most complex squadron in the MSG. And he too has been very busy having a lot of fun with outsourcing a large part of his squadron, all the while continuing to provide seamless mission support to this wing and to our mission partners. Drew, I know that the LRS culture of excellence and its high level of esprit de corps because of you will infuse into port operations as they join your team. Thank you for your continued outstanding leadership, and thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Colonel Grogan. Lieutenant Colonel Carmichael would now address the 455th Expeditionary Aerial Port Squadron for the last time. Thank you, Senior Armand Carlson. You're awesome. You're doing a great job. Okay, before I get started, I'd like to thank the uh, the Honor Guard and the uh, volunteers uh, for volunteering to uh, participate in today's ceremony. You guys look really sharp out there. Thank you very much. 
Also, I'd like to thank uh, Master Sergeant Norston and his team who put this ceremony together. Without their support, none, none of this would have been possible. And lastly, I'd like to thank the formation for participating as the representative of the Air Airport Squadron. You guys look real sharp. Look like strong port dogs out there. I'd like to see it. General Kelly, uh, Colonel Grogan, Colonel Allen Halligan, uh, Chief Brown, uh, Colonel Merritt, Colonel Walker, Lieutenant Colonel Wilson, Clint, um, fellow squadron commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's ceremony. What an absolute honor it has been to command the 455th Expeditionary Aerial Port Squadron and the two detachments, one at Bastion and one at Masri Sharif. I feel truly humbled and honored to represent the men and women of this squadron in a combat zone, helping to ensure the liberty of the people of Afghanistan so their children can receive an education, so their women have simple liberties like the ability to have an active voice in their own government. It's because of the hard work of the men and women of this aerial port that, that they have this freedom guaranteed. The people of this squadron are, were responsible for the successful retrograde operation of our nation's longest war, moving over 1.1 million tons of cargo over the past six years, and 2.4 million passengers, all of that on 204,000 missions since the squadron's activation in 2008. This is no small accomplishment. Over the past year, six years, the 455th Expeditionary Aerial Port Squadron was the, was the busiest aerial port in the entire Department of Defense. During my tenure, you could combine all the cargo moved in all the major strategic aerial ports in the United States, and the 455th almost doubled their workload. And we did it without all the high-speed material handling equipment, and with less than half the manpower of the average aerial port. Whether our airmen were active duty, guard, reserve, contractor, we came together as a team to make the mission happen. The mission of the 455th Expeditionary Aerial Port Squadron included the safe upload and download of passengers and cargo on, on Air Force, commercial, and short takeoff and landing aircraft and included the careful movement of all fallen heroes that passed through Bagram Airfield. It included the loading of airdrop missions supporting the warfighter on the leading edge of the fight, ensuring they had the bullets and rations needed to continue taking the fight to the enemy. It included the loading of ballot boxes heading to Kabul from multiple districts from around the country for the recent Afghan presidential election recount, without which the first ever successful transition of president, presidential power in the country of Afghanistan would have never happened. It included the collection of, uh, distrib and distribution of over 1,100 pounds of humanitarian aid donated to the people of Afghanistan. It included the, the training of 27 Afghan National Air, For Air Force port dogs, enabling Afghanistan to perform aerial port operations. All this led to the 455th Expeditionary Air Report Squadron being named Air Combat Command's winner for the largest Air Terminal of the Year award in 2013, and Air Combat Command's winning of the 2011 Vern Orr Award as a unit that makes the most efficient use of its human resources. None of these accomplishments are done by the commander alone. It's an absolute team effort. I'd like to give my heartfelt thank you to the airmen of the 455th Expeditionary Area Port Squadron, past and present. And I had the distinct pleasure of working for our port dogs over the past seven months. Without your efforts, the people of Afghanistan could, could not be living under the umbrella of liberty for the past 13 years. Thank you. I'd also like to thank my commander and mentor, Colonel Grogan. I know I haven't always been the ideal protege, especially when I show up late to meetings. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. <laughs> but I sincerely appreciate your patience 
and the time you have uh, spent to keep me on the correct path, so thank you, sir. Of course, Colonel Grogan has his own team, so I'd like to thank Colonel Cooper, Lieutenant Colonel Belko, Chief Bankston, Chief Watson, and the group staff. I'd like to thank General Kelly, and not because you kept me motivated going around that perimeter, though, sir, but I'd like to thank you for your leadership. I'd like to thank, thank Colonel Eller Heiligan for being patient with me. I'd like to thank Chief Brown and all the wing staff for their down-to-earth approach when dealing with, with us squadron commanders. It's a personal touch that is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Oh, and also thank you for all the DV tours, because we know, we know how much those DVs like to tour the aerial board. <laughs> To my fellow squadron commanders, I can honestly say you are the best I've ever seen. I'd be proud to be number six of six amongst a group of peers such as yourselves. Thank you for your support, your advice, and your friendship. I'd like to thank Senior Master Rodriguez, Rodriguez, Rod, Captain Berzonski, who I've known for years, by the way. I was one of his ROTC instructors. Major Weiser, Major Manser, Master Sergeant Riley, Master Sergeant Panola, for your support and your honest feedback. It has truly been an incredible ride, and this has been the best deployment of my career, for sure, because of you and our friendship. Chief, Chief Van Oss, who I'd like to call Chief Van Awesome, you are truly, you truly exemplify the top 1% of the Air Force. Command is not solitary and it's never a burden. And that is due in large part to the companionship and teamwork provided by our senior enlisted advisor. Chief, you took that to the highest level. You are never afraid to tell me the truth and frankly keep me in line with a closed door session when I needed it the most. You kept me sane in a place that's full of craziness. You were the guy I, that I talked to when I needed the time to vent. You're absolutely someone I value and the thing I value the most is our friendship. Thank you, Chief. Last but not least, I'd like to thank my family. Without the love and support of my family, I would have no perspective. This would mean nothing. So thank you, and I'll see you real soon. I can honestly say this has been amongst the best assignments in my 22-year career in the military. I so much look forward to coming to work every day and being part of this amazing team. It's kind of bittersweet that I have to leave the 455th Expeditionary Aerial Port Squadron. Part of me wants to run this squadron forever. I really do love this job. But the other part knows I need to get home to my family and serve my country in the next Air Force job. It's not the job or the mission that makes it so great. Although the mission is pretty awesome here. I mean, it's really just, this is a dream mission. I mean, we're just loading planes and downloading planes. It's nuts and bolts, front and line, kind of get out there kind of job, and I love leading that. But it's not, it's not the mission so much as it's the people that make it great. I didn't volunteer for this assignment, for the mission or for the extra money. I did it because I watched my airmen from my aerial port in Charleston deploying to Afghanistan sometimes eight and nine times, and I wanted to be there with them. I didn't deploy for the, for the people of Afghanistan as much as I deployed for my fellow airmen standing next to me, serving their country selflessly. It's because of you, that's why I'm here. That's why this has been such a great assignment, and that's, that is what I'll miss the most about this command, is the people. This transition is not unique. The inactivation of a squadron has happened many times throughout the history of the Air Force. This aerial port has 
its origins as a flight underneath the 455th Expeditionary Logistics Readiness Squadron. It is a natural evolution to transition back under the same squadron. We are very lucky in this case because the ELRS is commanded by one of the best logistics officers in the Air Force. I know it because it's in that, that program you got. His bio is pretty impressive. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of working with Lieutenant Colonel Pape for the past seven months, and I'm proud to call him my friend. Drew, you have been a great friend to me and to the aeroport. It is a pleasure to turn over this mission and these great airmen to your command. So with this transition back to the Expeditionary Logistics Readiness Squadron, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Henry Ford. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. I'm confident the airmen of the aerial port flight will have great success in the future. It's because we are port dogs. Always were and always will be. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Carmichael. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and remain standing as Colonel Grogan officially inactivates the 455th Expeditionary Aerial Port Squadron. Squadron, and hut! Attention to orders. By the order of the Department of the Air Force and Air Force Instruction 38-101, the 455th Expeditionary Aerial Port Squadron at Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, is inactivated effective 1 January 2015. Members of the inactivated squadron will now be dismissed and aligned under the 455th Expeditionary Logistics Readiness Squadron. Squadron dismissed. Flight, fall in. Hooray, press. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the Expeditionary Logistics Readiness Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Pate. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, I want to say, General Kelly, thank you for continuing to believe in me, uh, for the trust and confidence you provided me, and for allowing me to continue to command. Uh, likewise, Colonel Grogan, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, command is an absolute privilege and it is an honor. I take it very seriously. I appreciate the opportunity. To the rest of the wing leadership, uh, thank you very much for attending as well as the rest of the wing. Members from the Port Flight now, Port Dogs, as well as members from the LRS that are here, thank you so much for attending. Chris, I want to say a personal thanks to you. Seven months is a long time here. Uh, the accomplishments of what you did with the Aeroport Squadron are amazing. Your leadership, your guidance, your focus, uh, it is humbling and you are a great leader and a great commander to your troops. So thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for the sacrifice of your family. I wish you the absolute best in the future as you go on staff and uh, enjoy that time with your family, enjoy the time with the kids. Uh, think about us, remember us, and continue to be a great advocate for us. For the Port Dogs, your accomplishments truly are humbling and amazing. I welcome you to the LRS, 
Uh, we look forward to you joining the family, being part of the proud squad that we have as we continue to team and partner and develop the logistics capabilities and provide those services that our wings so desperately need to be successful and to continue to execute the ATO every day. I look forward to get out and meeting each and every one of you. Uh, thank you for attending today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Pate. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today as we close this chapter for the 455th Expeditionary Area Report Squadron. After the ceremony, feel free to join us for appetizers and light refreshments. Please stand and remain standing for the singing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. Please remain in place until the official party has departed. <laughs>